Bestiary is one of my favorite mechanics in Path of Exile. Coincidentally, it is also one of the easiest mechanics to farm because the most efficient way to do it is in white maps. That's because all of the expensive beasts like Herkic Emerald can appear even in tier 1 maps and in higher tier maps some cheap beasts start to appear which reduces the chance for the expensive ones. And if you want to know more about bestiary mechanics, make sure to check out my video from the last week, where I explain everything you need to know about it. Link is going to be in the description. Last week, bestiary have been pretty popular and very profitable, so to no surprise a lot of people have been asking me, how good is it this week? And to answer that question, I did a test of 100 white maps with bestiary and some other mechanics. Considering this is a white map strategy, the results may surprise you. But before we jump into the results, let's start with the strategy setup. So for this test, I decided to go for 100 strand maps because it has a very simple layout, which means it is very easy to find all of the beasts and it also a very low tier. If you want to go for a different map, beach is also another good option or dunes or even cemetery as a tier four, which are exactly all of the maps I did favorite. And for the Scarab, I decided to go for Polish Bestiary Scarab, and it is actually one of the most common questions I'm getting, which Scarab you should go for, uh, Rusted, Polished, or uh, Gilded. And Rusted is going to give you one Red Beast, Polished two, and Gilded three. So the rule I like to follow is just one Chaos per one Red Beast. So if Rusted, go for 1C, go for it, Polished for 2C, and Gilded for 3C, which pretty much never happens, so I almost never use Gilded. And right now polished are around 2.5 chaos, which is still pretty good. Uh, so in my opinion, if you have uh, more investment, go for polished. If you don't have that much currency, go for rusted. It doesn't matter too much. Both of them should be fine. And for the sextant, I went for compass that gives uh, three possessed monsters are going to drop a gilded scarabs in every map. And this uh, synergizes very well with Seance, which in the last league was in this area, now it is in here, which is going to make up to five monsters in each map possessed. And from my experience, pretty much never uh, less than three monsters are going to be uh, possessed, which means you're going to always get a full value out of this uh, compass. And the other compass you could go for is create a copy of a beast capture in a map. But for this test, I decided to not go for it. And it is another question I get a lot. Is it worth to go for it? And to be honest, it is just a question of price. And also, are you willing to put yellow beast in orbs? Because uh, when you're going to use this compass, you're going to get way more yellow beast. You're going to have to uh, spend a lot of time in your bestiary, just constantly uh, put beasts in orbs, which is not something that I personally enjoy. So that's why I decided to not go for it. But if you do spend yellow beasts, maybe for some of your own crafts, uh, it could be a good idea to go for it. Or if you don't mind putting beasts in orbs, uh, as of right now, they go for, I think, like 15 to 20 chaos, which I think is actually worth it. But uh, like I said, it is going to make the strategy more annoying. So it is up to you if you want to go for it. On the Atlas tree, of course, I went for pretty much all of the bestiary nodes. So here we get a chance to duplicate the beasts. I didn't go for Animal Companion because we don't need any Einhar Atlas missions. This is why I also didn't choose these points and these points uh, over here. But I still uh, went for big games to have a chance that yellow beasts are going to be replaced with red ones. And here you get additional yellow beasts. And the most important wheel is this one where we get unnatural selection, which gives us just more cracky cameras and phenomenal arachnids, and also hunt from for the Kraken, which also gives us increased chance to uh, encounter cracky chimeras. And here we just get the chance for additional red beasts. And this is also a pretty good uh, node, great migration. It is just gonna give you a chance that you're gonna get a full map of beasts, usually between 20 and 30. And thanks to the big game, quite a lot of them are gonna be red beasts. And here we also get a 8% chance that beasts are gonna ap appear in pairs. So sometimes you will encounter Cracky Kimral, it is gonna have uh, another Cracky Kimral next to it, and also both of them can duplicate. So sometimes instead of one, very rarely, but you still, from time to time, will encounter uh, four Cracky Kimrals. Well, not encounter, but you will capture four thanks to the duplication. And for the other mechanics, I decided to go for a seance, like I said earlier, thanks to this uh, compass, we're gonna drop three Gilded Scarabs every single map from Possessed Monsters. 
and because of that I also went for Unrelenting Torment, which is gonna give you a little bit more loot from the possessed monsters. Uh, another mechanic is Essence, because Essences don't really care about uh, tier of maps that much, so when you're gonna do them in white maps it is still gonna be quite a lot of loot from them. And what is gonna happen very often is that the Essence monster is gonna be beast at the same time and it is also going to be possessed. So your goal in every map is to find one free Essence. Also we're gonna use Essence mob on map device, so two additional Essences. Then also kill all of the yellow beasts, search for cracky cameras and find map arachnids, and also find three possessed monsters. And very often this one monster is gonna be all of those three things. So it's gonna be essence, it's gonna be beast, and it is also gonna be possessed. So all of these three mechanics synergize very well with each other. And the last mechanics I decided to go for is delirium. That's because you can get it for free pretty much once every two to three maps by blocking all of the other uh, league mechanics and also getting uh, additional chance to encounter Mirror of Delirium. So we're gonna get it for free and it doesn't take additional time to uh, clear the map when you are doing Delirium. That's because the way I did it is if I encountered a mirror, I would just clear the map normally. I would go through the mirror and then hunt for all of the yellow bees, essences and possessed monsters. And the one only thing I would have to do extra, thanks to the, uh, because of the delirium, is kill the map boss at the end. Without delirium I wouldn't have to do it, so if there was no delirium in the map I wouldn't kill a map boss, but if it was uh, in a map I would do it, and thanks to it you get plus one to all of the rewards. And why do we want to farm delirium in white maps? Well, that's because you still drop quite a lot of delirium orbs. You don't get that many splinters, so that's why I didn't go for them. And also you don't really care about uh, cluster jewels. So that's why I just took all of the points that increase the chance to uh, give me delirium orbs and also increase the amount of rewards because the more rewards you get from delirium, the higher chance to get the delirium orb. And the remaining few points I decided to spend on subtle manipulation so that from time to time you're not gonna consume Scarab, which is a decent amount of profit, but uh, that's one thing I would remove if I decided to go for something else. It's nothing too crazy. And the other thing is chance for the maps that you're gonna drop are going to be tier higher. But I started with actually 100% chance for the maps to be uh, higher by also going for these points and eventually I decided to remove them and that's when I took the Unrelenting Torment and Subtle Manipulations and that's because I was dropping way too many tier 4 maps which were cemeteries and I wanted to drop more strands so I actually reduced the chance for my maps to be higher. And one question you probably will have is how can you sustain all of your strand maps? And the way I did it is with singular focus. If you take it, you have 200% chance that the maps you will drop will be favorite map and you will not drop any other maps, which we, to be honest, don't care about anyway. So the maps I decided to go for is Strand for the uh, tier 3. For the tier 2, I went for the beach and also I went for one uh, Dunes map, which is over here. And for the tier 4, I went for the cemetery and pretty much all of these maps sell between 3 to 5 chaos and you would be surprised how fast do they sell there is actually quite a lot of uh, demand for uh, white maps for strategies like this but not that many people actually farm them so you can actually sell them pretty fast now that i went over the setup let me show you an example of the map so first thing i was doing is i was alchemying all of my maps and you don't have to do it. The only reason why I did it is because I wanted to drop a little bit more maps and also I wanted to have some additional monsters for the Delirium. Uh, but if you want to uh, keep your map a little bit easier, uh, like I said, you can just run them white. And then I was using the Polished Bestiary Scarab and I also was using Essence of the map device. And let's, let's not forget about the compass. So the way I was using my compass, but still I was able to drop white maps is I was using my compass on uh, void stones in here. I would put them on, then I would open the map. I would wait for it to be open and then I would take off the void stone. This way, this compass already applied to a map, but now when you're gonna kill monsters, the game's gonna check uh, which maps can drop. So you don't have void stone, which means you can still drop all of the white maps. So like I said earlier, if I would find Mirror of Delirium at the beginning of the map, I would go for it. And also remember, in every single map you have three or four goals. 
First goal is to find three possessed monsters, so you can drop the uh, Gilded Scarab. Second one is to find three essences. Third one is to kill all of the yellow beasts and potentially some red beasts. The only red beasts that we want to kill are Cricky Cameral, Fenwell Plegarachnid, uh, Farik Wolf Alpha and Farik Lynx Alpha. And the fourth goal is to kill a map boss, but that's only when you have Mirror of Delirium. So we will want to do that this time. So for the red beast, like I said, if it's a bad beast, you don't want to do it. So this is a crab, so I don't care about it. I want to kill all of the uh, yellow beasts though. And after you do these maps for a long time, we're gonna start recognizing which red beasts are and good, which ones are bad. So if you don't know about it, you can just kill all of the red beasts, it doesn't matter too much. And remember, kill all of the possessed monsters. You can also open your inventory to check how many scarabs you got. So I found two, so there's still one possessed monster somewhere in the map. And here we have another essence and another scarab. So now I already have all, all three gilded scarabs. Then I just continue with the map. And if at any point something like this happens, where I am running faster than Delirium, I actually would not care about it too much. I would just continue running the map. I don't want to waste my time for uh, waiting for Delirium. Delirium is gonna be probably the lowest amount of profit you're gonna get from uh, all of the mechanics from this map, so it doesn't matter too much. And you still can, from time to time, drop some Delirium Orbs, even if it uh, disappears a bit earlier. So I just continue with the map, found another uh, Yellow Beast, and now I don't have to kill a boss because the Lyrium already disappeared. And that was pretty much the map. Unfortunately, this time we didn't find any expensive beasts. And after every mapping session or when you get a message in your chat that your manager in full, you will have to go to your menagerie and remove some of the beasts. So the way you want to do it is you want to use a regex, which I'm going to uh, link in uh, the comments or in the description. And then you want to just go over all of the useless beasts and just remove all of them. And after you're done with that, then you will have a clean menagerie with just very good beasts like Farik Lix Alpha, Farik Wolf Alpha, Fenwap Legarachnis, Creaky Kimralds, and just yellow beasts. And the way you recognize yellow beasts is that they don't have any art. And then you want to buy uh, bestiary orbs and you will orb all of the beasts, which is the most annoying part of this strategy, but that's how you make money. So. Unfortunately, everyone has to do it, but if you uh, don't want to do it uh, too much, you can still go for just the uh, red beasts. So like I said earlier, just lynxes, wolves, cracky cameras, and fenwell pegarachnis, and just ignore yellow beasts. This way you're gonna clear your maps uh, much faster, and you're gonna get more uh, red beasts per hour, but you're gonna uh, also make a little bit less profit per map. So it is up to you. If you like it, go for it. If you don't, don't do it. And now finally, let's go over the profit. So how much did we make from this strategy? So here you can see all of the beasts. So I found 11 Fenwell Plegarachnids and only two Cracky Cameralds. And average is supposed to be around 10 Fenwell Plegarachnids uh, per 100 maps and 10 Cracky Cameralds. So uh, one Cracky Cameral in 20 maps and one Fenwell Plegarachnids in 20 maps. So unfortunately here I got a little bit uh, unlucky because Fenwell Plegarachnids are only 50C and Cracky Cameral are like one divines. So I got more of the uh, cheaper beast, but that's how the strategy unfortunately works. From time to time we will get unlucky, sometimes we will get lucky. Uh, I know that in the past a lot of people would ask me that if they didn't find a single Cracky Cameral in 100 maps, are they doing something wrong? And unfortunately, no, it's just RNG. Maybe uh, you're, do you're gonna do another 10 maps and you're gonna find five more. Uh, sometimes you'll find uh, two or maybe even four Cracky Cameras in just one map. So it is a pretty RNG strategy. But to uh, help with RNG, we are doing a lot of other stuff. So as you can see, even though you might get unlucky with bees, you will still get quite a lot of profit from other things. So as you can see here, I got quite a lot of essences. I upgraded all of them to the uh, defending ones, except for Envy and Red, because I think they are worth selling as a Shrieking. Here you can see some of the uh, corrupted ones and also Remnants of Corruption. And I actually over-sustained my Remnants of Corruption. I did buy 100 and then uh, I removed 100 from uh, this results. And so these, all of these are uh, straight up just profit. And that's mostly because I was using the uh, additional 20% chance to find Remnants of Corruption. And I actually was surprised how many more Remnants you find if you use these points. But unfortunately, if you find Remnant of Corruption on the Essence, you cannot use Remnant on that Essence. So it will result with a little bit less of the Corrupted Essences. And here, as you can see, I got quite a lot of maps. And like I was saying earlier, 
you can sell them pretty fast uh, in bulk. So uh, the price of them is between 3 to 5 chaos, but for purpose of this test, I decided to price all of them as 3 chaos pair. And here we can see all of the compasses from the uh, compass car up, and some of them probably dropped from things like Delirium or maybe uh, Arch Nemesis monsters. But usually from white map, you're gonna dro drop just rusted scarab, so uh, I didn't get many extra gilded ones. And here are all of the Delirium orbs, and I also did get two simulacrums and a half. So still quite a lot of Delirium orbs from the Delirium, even in white maps. And here in a second tab, we just have some random uh, currency. Uh, most of it, I assume, uh, also came from Delirium or just from regular monsters. Uh, like, like I said earlier, some Rasses carabs from the Arch Nemesis. So I also did include in the results. I did remove some stuff that I wouldn't bother selling, like some uh, low-level Forbidden Tomes or some Catalysts and oils, oils maybe uh, fossils that you get from uh, Delirium from time to time, because I only got like between 5 to 10 of them, so I decided to not include them. So here you can see just a regular currency and some Scarabs and also stock decks. And now let's look at the spreadsheet. So here you can see how much I did spend on this test and how much I gained. So I did 100 maps with 100 scarabs and 100 map device mods. I also had to buy 688 uh, bestiary orbs, for mostly for the yellow beast, and also I bought 25 uh, scarab sections. I did not include a remnants as the cost, because like I said, I started with 100. I ended up with, I think, 170, so I just removed 100 from the uh, profit. And here uh, in the total cost, I did spend around 10 divines, with uh, the divines being 230 chaos. And this whole test took me uh, 4 hours, but it actually took me 3.5 hours if you only counted maps. Uh, the uh, remaining half an hour was uh, through orbing all of the beasts. So considering this is a white map strategy, 80 divines per hour is actually very very nice. On top of that, you can customize the strategy a lot. Like I said, you can remove farming yellow bees, which would reduce uh, profit per map uh, by a little bit, but you would be doing maps much faster, which could increase your profit per hour. Uh, also, you can remove Delirium if you don't like uh, maybe waiting for it from time to time or you have harder time recognizing the bees when there is Delirium on the ground. I can 100% understand why you would uh, like to not do it. But this is just my setup. Uh, try what you like. Uh, you can, like I said, also remove Polish Scarab, you can go for Rusted. You could even remove Bestiary actually completely. You could just go for Essences and uh, Compasses for Scarabs, maybe plus Delirium, and that's it. Um, this strategy is are actually highly customizable. So these were the test results, and I actually quite enjoyed this strategy. Like I said, Ilya Bestiary is one of my favorite mechanics, and I really enjoy doing very easy uh, content, but try to do it as efficient as possible, so I'm probably gonna do it more. And also I'm gonna try to find other similar strategies that you can do in white maps, and if I find them, I'm also gonna make videos like this. So that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.